Welcome to the Crotch Data Guidance Tutorial. These training modules will cover each step described in the FDOT State Safety Office Crotch Data Guidance with hands-on project examples. This recording covers step one, Crotch Data Download, which is one of the five steps described in the guide. Speaking to you today, we have... This is Benjamin Jacobs. I'm the Florida Department of Transportation's State Safety Office's Crash Records and Research Administrator. And I am Rupert Giroux. I am the Safety Data Coordinator at the Florida Department of Transportation in the State Safety Office. And I am Benazir Portal, and I support the FDOT State Safety Office as a consultant. Let's get an overview of the material we, would, we will be covering today. To begin with, we will go over a guide overview as far as the next step, we will cover the resources that are associated with the guide. And next, we will describe a project example that we will be using throughout these training modules. We will use this project example and go through the data, the crash data download for each of the different databases that we have. And lastly, we're going to go over the crash report download. The safety crash data guidance was developed to help add clarity and consistency to the use of crash data for safety evaluations. The purpose of this guidance is to illustrate step by step how to leverage the most complete and recent crash data as required by various FDOT manuals to perform safety analysis. The most recent version of the guide is available through the State Safety Office website. And now I'll be demonstrating how you would go about downloading or getting a copy of the guide itself. On any browser, you can Google FDOT State Safety Office. There are a series of resources under this website, and we encourage you all to take a look at the different links that are available. The guide that we're going to be covering today is actually saved under the safety engineering section of this website. If you scroll down halfway through the website, you'll notice a link that it's called Crash Data Systems and Mapping. This is the house of our crash data guidance, and it is actually the first link that you're seeing on the available resources. And this version was released on March 7, 2022. So you'll note that the guide is updated as resources are modernized. We're going to try to keep this up to date as we implement changes. The most recent version of the guide should be used at all times, and a technical memorandum will be published announcing the release of the crash data guidance, then it will become accessible through the State Safety Office and the Traffic Engineering and Operations websites. And we'll show you where those sites are. As an example, I'll pull the Traffic Engineering and Operations website. You can just search for FDOT TEO. If you land on the main page for traffic, you're going to notice a similar layout as the State Safety Office website. And as you scroll down, you're going to notice a section that it's called Traffic Engineering and Operations Bulletins and Memos. And the different bulletins and memorandums that are released are provided by date under this website. So keep an eye out for any updated documentation as far as the crash data guidance. As the State Safety Office staff continue to improve the data quality and timeliness, the associated resources and guidelines will be updated and shared through similar training to this one. The, the three crash data systems discussed in this module, which are the Crash Analysis Reporting System or CAR system, the SSO, State Safety Office GIS query tool, and the Signal 4 Analytics system hosted at the University of Florida will be consolidated into a single database in the future. So this guide will be updated as the integration is completed. And note that the rest of this demonstration is being completed by our safety office support consultants in order to show the level of effort involved in downloading and moving the crash data from the consultant 
position with the resources of you know, from a consultant office rather than within the safety office itself. Thank you, Ben. These training modules are focused on directly applying the crash data guidance. It is recommended to have the crash data links handy to follow along and familiarize yourself with the available resources. We will be going through the following resources today. The first one, you already got a feel and taste for what it looks like. It's the state safety office crash data guidance document. You already saw where it's housed and where it's constantly going to get uploaded if updated. The next resource we're going to be reviewing is a crash analysis reporting system. Car online does require pre-approval for individual user access as well as SDOT VPN to access the database. The next resource is SSO GIS or State Safety Office GIS query tool. Note that this one does not require pre-approval. It is open to the public. The next resource we're going to be reviewing is the Signal 4 Analytics, which is housed by the University of Florida. You do need pre-approval for non-FDOT staff. Now, VPN access is not required. You can access through their main website. Note that FDOT staff with a valid FDOT email address will be able to log in without pre-approval moving forward. EDMS or Electronic Document Managed Management System is the last resource we're going to be reviewing today. This is FDOT's repository for traffic, for Florida traffic crash reports. Note you do need individual access and VPN to download documents from this platform. You must be aware that no additional documents will be uploaded for traffic crash reports after August 1st, 2022. We highly encourage you to work with your agency project manager to submit the corresponding automated access request forms or ARF to obtain access to the corresponding forms. For this first module, we're covering step one of the guide, which is data download. This is a high level snapshot of what the first page of the guide and you can see that it's labeled step number one on the box. Through the guide, you're going to notice that there are several questions answered the corresponding order for these five steps. Okay, now that we have covered the essential background of the guide and available resources, we'll dive right in into step one. The project we'll use and as an example is a resurfacing, restoration, and rehabilitation project, or triple R. And the project we're going to be reviewing is to be completed along State Route 932 within District 6, from west of Northwest 82nd Avenue to east of West 6th Avenue in Miami-Dade County. To download the crash data, you will need the following information. The State Highway Roadway ID, the beginning and ending mile post, as well as the years or dates of crash data desired. Since this analysis is being completed along the segment, we need to understand the turn length of the endpoints of the corridor. Let's circle back to the first item you will need, the roadway ID and milepost. You could obtain this information from Car Online, which has an easy to access query or list where you can obtain this information and we'll go over when we open up car online and do a live demonstration how you would go about selecting the, the row id if you do not have that information handy you can also use a fdot strain like diagram which has an easy to navigate gis web application within the web app you can filter by the district as you're seen by the county or by the row id and what we want to accomplish with this training modules is to be able to give you a feel and taste for how you would actually go about downloading the data and also to give you a feel for the time that you would typically spend downloading this information. So again, I typically have my hyperlink saved or you can search FDOT train like diagram or SLD. The second link that you're seeing right there on the resources is the one that is gonna take you to the web application. 
And as I mentioned, you can query by the different districts. You can also query by county, or you could search for your roadway ID within the drop down menu. For expediting the process, I typically prefer to select from the district drop down menu to narrow down my search. And what you can do is look for your roadway ID on the drop down menu. Once you have identified the roadway you're going to be looking for, you can, if you do not find it from the drop down menu, you could also toggle within the map and navigate to the specific or the desired roadway. And what you would do is select the information button, click on the specific segment, and hit launch PDF. The SLD provides a lot of helpful information. The main attributes that you're going to be seeking to obtain to help with the crash data download is the row ID that you would see in the top right corner and then the corresponding mile post to the particular segment you're looking to download so this gives you a three decimals for your beginning and end mile post what i typically like to do within the pdf is highlight the segments if i ever need to go back or readjust the limits, you at least have this information saved. Now we will go back to discussing the beginning and end mile post to help us narrow down the length that we need to be selecting for the crash data download. On the left, you have the western endpoint of the corridor. And as I mentioned, the triple R begins west of 82nd Avenue. And what you're looking for within defining what those the mile post are is you want to make sure that any potential turn lanes within your intersections are considered for. In this particular case, the western endpoint, I measure the turn lane to be 250 feet. And what I anticipate is that any crashes within an intersection within 250 feet of the intersection will be included if I just pull the crash data for that particular mile post. In often cases, the turn lanes exceed the 250 feet from the center of the intersection. And that's where it gets really critical to make sure you are extending your corridor length to account for those numbers. If we take a look at the Eastern segment for evaluation, West Avenue, the turn lane for that westbound left turn lane, it actually exceeds 250 feet. So that will be what we will be using to adjust our model post for the crash data download in our examples. This is a summary of the data that we pulled. Again, critical information is your roadway ID. We have approximately 2.4 miles of segment, and we have adjusted the ending and mile post to account for those turn lanes on both corridor ends. And lastly, the information you will need to confirm and make sure is consistent as you're pulling the data through the three data bases is the years of data desired. So if I go back to the crash data guidance itself, you're scrolling down. If you're not sure how many years of data you should be evaluating this guide, it really aims to help answer all of those questions that as a practitioner, you may be unsure, or you may not have gotten clear direction of best practices. The guide itself recommends to pull the last five full calendar years of data, as well as the current year up to the day before the crash data being downloaded. While the partial year may not be utilized for annual average trends, it does help capture any recent Crashes, whether it's fatal, severe injuries, or any change in pattern in the crashes that the particular corridor, intersection, or study area may be experiencing. All right, we will move to the first crash data download database, and that will be Crash Analysis Reporting System or CAR Online. This is the landing page for CAR Online. And as we previously noted, when we're working with a few of these databases, it will be required to have FDOT VPN access logged on. So at the moment, I'm currently not logged on into FDOT's VPN. 
And if I attempt to access the database, it tells me that I can't be reached. So what I need to do is disconnect from my current VPN access and go ahead and connect to FEOT's VPN. It typically doesn't take that long. So sometimes if it's not responding, I try to open a new tab. And oftentimes what you're gonna notice, you're gonna need to update most folks that have FUT logging sections, but if you're not new and you're having issue or you're trying to access after 60 days, the main issue you may be running into is that your password needs to be renewed. Since I have logged in, I didn't have any issues, but that's not something that should take too long to be able to reset or renew your password. We should note that when you log into the car online system, the password you're using is what they call the RACF password. It's not the same as the password you use to log into the VPN. So when you have access to the car online system, you'll have a separate password that gets sent to you and maintained for that system. Thank you for clarifying, Ben. Some of the information that we're going to be covering today, it's really focused on downloading on state roads. There's a lot more information available through the help user manual. I encourage you all, if you want more detail on the different reporting available to take a look at that amazing resource put together by the state safety office. What you're seeing on the top is your main menu for data download. You could do state roads, all roads, different subsets, high crash, different tables or different options. Under the state roads, you could download by an area wide you could select a specific district, a specific county, depending on what your scope of work is. You could also go around downloading by a row ID, which is a feature we're going to be using, or using the different query options that you're seeing in this bottom menu. Around a node is another one that potentially could be of interest if you're focused on an intersection. But again, highly encourage you to use the user guide to help you determine next steps. What I mentioned earlier, if you don't have your road ID handy, or if you don't have access to the straight line diagram, you could also identify the road ID by using the search menu. And up here, it gives me, I was trying to do the search button. It gives me the message that at least one of the route county or district must be selected as an initial roadway feature or filter. So since we know that this is in District 6 or Miami-Dade County, I can go through and filter the roadway IDs by the corresponding county. And you can see that here you have the entire list of roadway IDs within Miami-Dade County. So the process that you could take is search for the roadway ID, select the roadway, and you could also use the note selector feature in this case, I picked a random roadway ID doesn't match with our project example, but to just show an example of what you would go about. So for example, for that particular roadway, you could select the Coral Gable city limits as your beginning and beginning mile point range. And for the ending point mile range, I could select a different node. It is another option. Most of the data downloads that I typically do. I like just to have the roadway ID identified from the SLD and make sure I write down my beginning and end mile post before going into car online. But it's been coming very handy to have those features for a specific node in other scenarios. So in this particular case, I'll just go ahead and type in the roadway we're gonna be working with for data download. I will also specify the beginning and the mile post. So that's the beginning. And for any mile post, we, did, we calculate it to be 2.947. Oftentimes you just go to the next step, but it's because it's easy to forget to update this. But again, you want to make sure the default on the tool is to 2019, as we're seeing in those two top boxes, January 1st through December 31st of 2019. As suggested by the guide, we want to be able to pull the most recent full five calendar years, as well as the partial data that we may have during that year. So for this particular case, I need to update the data range that we're going to be downloading to January 1st, 2017. And then if you click on the drop-down menu, 
I can also click for today's date, which makes save some time on navigating to your specific date, or you can also just use the different tools or features available within the calendar. The next step is to add it to your batch list for download. And sometimes you're going to notice that the batch location is not added to your list, which doesn't allow you to download. So what I do is add a second time and now you'll see it generated the last two. So make sure you delete that duplicate location. Then I go ahead and submit the report request, which creates a PDF that will go into a little more detail of what information is provided within that PDF, as well as submitting the extract report. There are different levels of extract that you can obtain. So the crash level extract is the one that we often use and it provides one row per crash. You could also download the vehicle driver passenger extract or the non-motorist extract. And today I'm working with experts of crash data. So if you notice me hesitating, I know Ben and Rupert probably have a hundred better ways of doing things, but this is to show a, a live scenario of how you would go about data without expecting you to be full experts on the subject. So once you have hit submit the crash data download, you should be receiving two emails with whatever email that was registered to your account. So the first one that we submitted is the detail report. When you click on that, if you're on Google Chrome, it'll prompt you to open an Internet Explorer. So I would just agree. And this is the PDF that gets generated with the extracts that we submitted. The but Internet Explorer requirement is something that the department is working to fix. But for now, that's how it works. And then the second link that you should receive if you submit it for a crash level detail is the one that is going to contain your Excel. I've made the mistake before of hitting open, depending on the number of records, that may not be the best option. The safest and quickest way to, to go about downloading that file is do a save as. And I'll leave it under the same location where I had that PDF. I do want to give folks a feel of what information is coming through those two data downloads and what has been helpful as someone that is doing the safety evaluation to understand the attributes within the different data sets that are coming in. So what you're going to notice on the CSV file, you're going to, depending on the file size we have, 2.4 miles, so I'm anticipating a considerable number of crashes. So we have about 2,700 crashes within our study segment. Note that it comes in a CSV, so if you're making modifications to this Excel file and you want to save it, make sure that you're saving it as an Excel workbook so you're not losing those changes. You're going to see different columns that provide very helpful information that helps with the evaluation that we're going to be discussing in future modules. If you are not familiar with the different attributes that you're seeing within Excel. The key sheet or detail sheet that comes within the car online PDF report that you extracted has very helpful information. It comes in the form of an attachment along with the original data download. This attachment is shown as a pin on Bluebeam and you can access it through the document properties. For Adobe Acrobat, the attachment shows as a paper clip and you can access it by double clicking on it. Some, not all of the attributes that you will see in the Excel columns match the detailed description on this attachment. As an example, if you are trying to decode the lighting conditions reported during a crash occurrence, you could use the detailed code sheet to interpret the code applied in the Excel output. And we would understand that code marked as one, it represents daylight condition, as opposed to code five represents dark, not lighted conditions. I'll close out of the detail sheet and dive into some of the details available in the export PDF. An important component of this export are the parameters used to complete the data download. And this is documented on this export. For example, if you're asking for a consultant to download crash data, and you want to check that these parameters align 
with the study parameters, this is what I recommend reviewing. The data download are summarized on the top of the page. As shown here, there's three main components that I recommend verifying and do a quality control check on. And these include the dates. And you see those summarized on the top left corner of the PDF, as well as the roadway ID and the beginning and ending mile posts that are summarized in the middle of the page. If you scroll to the end of the PDF, you will find a summary of the crash data totals. This page provides a breakdown of the crashes as well as the number of fatalities and injuries by year. As an example, the fatal crash statistics, they provide the number of crashes that involve fatalities and the number of fatalities that were reported within that crash. In some cases, you will see that number being higher than the number of crashes reported on the left or different as well as injuries. In this case, as an example, in 2021, we had two fatal crashes. They involved two fatalities, but there were additionally two injuries reported. In a similar fashion, injury crashes statistics are provided, and you can easily identify there's typically more injuries associated with injury-related crashes. Property damage only just provides the total number of crashes. And then the totals basically summarize the number of crashes and the number of fatalities and injuries associated within all of these crashes. The last two columns provide information related to the location of crashes and whether these occurred at intersecting roadways, basically between at intersection versus intersection influence area. So we'll go into more detail in next modules on how to process this information and how to navigate it. The purpose for this particular module is to make sure that we're providing you with the right tools to access and download the information before you can dive into the analysis. That pretty much completes the data download within Car Online, and we can move on to SSO GIS. The SSO GIS query tool, as we previously mentioned, you do not need to obtain individual user access in advance of downloading any of the crash data records. What you're going to notice that I do to save time is really ping all of these databases to my left, different resources, including the FDOT, SLD, and of course, the three databases that we're covering today, as well as EDMS. So for FDOT, SSO, GIS, and the query tool, there's really neat features on how you can go about downloading the data. Something that you're going to notice is on the top right corner, you have the flexibility of choosing if you want to be reviewing with the different base map options. I like to be able to navigate to my location and identify from high level where I'm going to be conducting the data download. And once I am closer to the intersection level, I like to toggle to imagery that helps me identify if there are any conditions that I should be considering, whether extending the train lanes or different sections that I may consider excluding for the data download. So you could go ahead and download by value, where you're basically specifying different attributes within SSO GIS. What I will be displaying or sharing today, since we have a segment, is actually drawing your boundary around the corridor that you're evaluating and then selecting the specific attributes we need to consider for evaluation. So just to go back to the street, since it's easier to see, our particular study corridor begins west of 82nd Avenue, which is also called West 24th Avenue or Royal Palm Road. And that's also where the SLD information comes in handy. In most cases, you actually get the different alternative road names that some roads we experience. So in this particular case, I we have a long segment, 2.4 miles. So I'll try to expedite just in lieu of time, since we have two more databases we need to cover. But what you would typically go about is basically drawing a boundary around the corridor. I'm using the mouse the and click on the mouse to be able to pin the specific location within the map. And then I'm using the keyboard to help me navigate and go up and down within the map. 
if I want to scroll down, up, or out, I use the mouse, but it's relatively easy and quick depending on the length of your corridor. Something that I also like to share when training folks for crash data download, if you have an intersection that goes beyond that 250 feet of intersection influence area, you may want to consider paying closer attention to those intersections and identifying locations where you may want to extend that area beyond just the segment. This is a good example of potentially one intersection that may be experiencing crashes beyond that 250 feet. There's other driveways or side street intersections where it doesn't necessarily add much value to have that level of granularity when you're downloading the data. For this particular case with the freeway coming through, it it is a geolocated query tool. So if you're not specifying the roadway ID in this particular case. So when we obtain the crash records, you most likely will retrieve some of the crashes that are happening on 826 that we're seeing right there. So that is going to be part of the query we have to take care of on the post processing. But it's important for you to know that because they're geolocated, that's basically a boundary that it's being drawn around the location. So the exercise is relatively simple. Pay attention to pockets where you would actually anticipate having more crashes leading up to that intersection. Typically, intersection with turn lanes are a good indicator or signalized intersections that you're seeing higher demand may be a good indicator to pay more attention. So like I mentioned, we have to go all the way to West 6th Avenue. So I will try to expedite. And again, if I'm toggling between the street view image, imagery map or aerial, I don't lose the polygon that I just created. It just helps me be able to get a quicker sense of up until where I should be pulling the map and creating my polygon. Perhaps on this end, I may have gone too far outside of the influence area of that particular intersection. So I'm going through this exercise pretty quickly, but if you're working on a project specific safety evaluation, really pay attention because you may find yourself post-processing more crashes than you would like. And the closer of a polygon you have to your corridor for evaluation, the easier post-processing it will be. So, I think something that is important to mention, I try to keep it as closely as possible to the road ID, but crashes within private properties are not recorded within SSO GIS. I, before I was very careful of excluding any areas within private parking lots or other areas, but I would say, and Ben can provide more information on this, but any crashes on private property are not included as part of the database. That's true. Currently in our processing, we don't assign coordinates to crashes in parking, lot, parking lots or on private property, so they won't show up in the SSO GIS data set. So it's hard to see with the freeway, but in often cases I've seen some intersections that may have a turn lane that may be covered by some of the overpass bridges. So Again, pay attention to the location you're evaluating. When you're working at the project level, you have a lot of familiarity of different challenges that you may be running into as far as setting up. And hopefully we're almost at the end of our particulars of our of the beginning of the corridor. I missed section here, but just be extra careful with the curves to make sure you're capturing the full extent of your roadway. So now that we have defined the polygon where we want to download crash data for, we go into value. The number one thing that I will continue emphasizing is make sure that you have a consistent data set. You don't want R online with a different number of years than what you're pulling from SSO GIS or from signal for. So make sure those three are consistent. In further steps, we'll be discussing how to go about consolidating the three data sets. For now, we're focusing on how to retrieve information and the different tools that you will require. 
A few important features that you may want to consider depending on the study type. Sometimes it has been helpful to be able to query the crash data download by crash harmful event location by intersection type. Some other times, if you basically have the specific roadway ID and do not need to pay attention to turn names, you may want to consider just the roadway ID and identifying similar what we did with car online, the specific beginning and milepost. You may also want to query down your crash data download by driver behavior, crash category, or if you have specific reporting case numbers. Additional features if you're focused in either vulnerable road users or DUI related crashes, that could be a valuable feature to search data for. So it may take a few seconds. I hit search. Note that the results are limited to 5,000 records that we're seeing on the top. And I should be able, I may have lost my polygon. We'll not go through that exercise of redrawing the polygon, but I'll just do as an example, quick example of drawing the polygon right here. And go back to the value. And then I'll go through with hitting search again. You may run into this issue. As an alternative, what I have found helpful is to use SSOGIS on Microsoft Edge. Well, we had a technical glitch with the last recording, but we'll resume back where we left off. Specifically for the remaining portion of the training, we're going to finish going over the features within SSO GIS for crash data download. So let me pull back up. I'm going to start fresh. Again, it really saves me time having these hyper links on my bookmarks to easily query and go to the different resources that we have available. For the purpose of this training, I am just going to get close to the area, but I'm not going to spend time drawing the boundary. You have a good understanding of the level of detail and the attention that you need to be paying as you're drawing the boundary within your road. But specifically to show you the features of the data download, I'll select a random location, just draw a square or shape around there. You could also download or select to download data by a point, by a line, by a polyline. You can just do a square or you can also do a specific a circumference. That's got to be determined what is most useful based on the limits of your project. In this case, I have used the polygon because it allows me to draw the boundary in an easy manner around the turn lanes for the side street intersections that we're going to be encountering. So with that in mind, let me see a few additional features that we would like to highlight for you to be aware of. You can increase the buffer graphic, and this will change how the crash data is snapped into the shape that you're selecting. You could also, you have this button to say at search tolerance to point selection. And the last option that I want to highlight here is the include criteria from by values tab in, tab in selection. And under this, it's referring to the tab that you're seeing on the top left right before by shape. This is where you define the limits of your crash data range. You can also specify a specific calendar year. You can query the information and say, I only want crashes, highest injury in crash. There's several features or query features that you can include within this tab. So if you do select any of these filters out and you want them to be incorporated into your shape, shape download, make sure you have this check mark on and that will make sure to carry forward into your results. So create new results. I can actually it should pull. Oh, let's see. I should get it in the practice. We're gonna go back to our slides and just for quick example, the data range that we have specified within the rest of the data sets is January 1st, 
and we will download the data through July 28th. So once you have that, you hit the search and you should be receiving or it should come up. You would need to put in the filter criteria, the by value criteria, and then select the shape and then click search. Thank Making you, sure Brian. to check the box that says to include the by value criteria. I think this is unresponsive because when you click search, without the shape, it's looking statewide for your criteria. So when I go under the search, this is what you were referring to then, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to put in limiting criteria for date, for instance, that, that works perfectly well. Then you click on the shape tab and you draw your shape and then you click on the include that's it yeah and then you search there you go perfect and a moment ago i had google chrome and this one i just pulled up the edge that may facilitate if you're running into an extended or unreasonable delay you can test switching browsers and see if that resolves the issue so these are the data sets as you can see they're graphic geocoded and you can approximately see their location. And from this data set, you can hit export all to CSV and it'll download your data set. On step one, we're just walking through the different tools and resources that are available for crash data download. And on step two, we'll go into more detail of what that data download looks like and how we're combining the three data sets from Car Online, SSOGIS, and Signal 4. But just to give you a flavor, this is the CSV example that we just downloaded. There were a few crashes, obviously, for our segment. Our project example that we're using for the training, we're going to have a lot more records. But this is a good sample size, gives you different features. And there's some differences of the attributes that you're seeing from the crash data when compared to cars. So we'll walk through that under step two. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get us back to our presentation. That's what it's, it was happening. Then look at that. It looks statewide. That's like your statewide <laughs> search initial. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to close out of this one. We're going to move on to the next database that we have for crash data download, and that is Signal 4 Analytics. There has been a lot of changes happening a lot of upgrades that are happening i was excited to see some added features just today of what has been added so this training or this recording is a good starting point but be aware that there may be added, added features or changes down the road depending on what the group is working on is necessary so for as an example as of august 16th the access to signal for Anybody with an FDOT email address will no longer require submitting an access request through Signal 4 to be able to access the platform. Now, anybody with an FDOT email is able to log in with their credentials. However, for anybody without an FDOT email, they still need to go through the process of requesting an account, as you're seeing in this screen. And most, in most cases, they check with your project manager, corresponding project manager, or with the municipality you're working with, but they're supposed to be submitting the request for account, and folks on the back end will review and approve the request accordingly. Be aware that when you're submitting the request for access, you now need to specify whether traffic crash reports need to be included as part of the access. So that's something to keep in mind. Whereas before, I believe, Ben, and correct me if I'm missing something, but before, if you get access to the back, this portion of Signal 4, you had access to the traffic crash reports, whether it was within your geographic boundary, or if you had access to the platform, you had access to traffic crash reports. It may vary by, by the agency, but under DOT, if you got access, 
under DOT's contracts, we had automatic access to the documents, sometimes restricted to outside the privacy window of 70 days. But now the default DOT accounts that you brought up will not have access to the crash report documents automatically. This still requires a request. Perfect. And how do FDOT email account holders go about requesting access to the traffic crash report? They would submit in the automated access request form system within FDOT. There's an option on the bottom, just like requesting access to Signal 4 or used to be. There's a U of F Signal 4 analytics item for the ARF request, and you just check that, and that would be for access to now to documents. Perfect. Again, a lot of things and features within the platforms are dynamic, so we'll, we're expecting to see more changes and upgrades, but this is a quick example of how dynamic things are. All right, so for Signal 4, we're going to go in into the platform. It's important to be aware that even without logging, you have some high-level statewide information, as you're seeing on this screen. There are some really neat features that if you're, again, you're not going to the project level detail, you can go back to 2012 if you would like and gather more information of on specifics, on a specific crash trends. You're seeing some of the emphasis areas listed on the left, overall number of crashes on that bottom chart. So this is in the map that you're seeing here, it's dynamic. So this is a good tool and resource to be aware of. It also gives you additional information and you can click and get additional values in there. As far as the timeline for when crashes get uploaded, I will refer back to the state safety office crash data guidance that we have been sharing with the group. That guide has a really neat graphic that gives you an insight on timeline and when you can expect crashes. So let's see if I can quickly jump to that. In reference to Signal 4, as you find this timeline, there it is. In reference to Signal 4, the data come into Signal 4 and are processed with preliminary locations the day after they're filed at FLHSMB. So that's basically within 24 hours of a crash yes. occurring. Yeah. Let me dive right in into crash data download. I'll go ahead and do the login. If you do not have a login, this is a quick access request form. Pretty straightforward. Make sure your project manager is completing it to request access for you. And we are in the platform now. There's different ways that you can query data. This is very similar to SSO GIS where you have a map that it's easy navigable. Let me pull up. So I basically did search crashes, geographic area, and you could do a new boundary and it allows you to do a rectangle, a polygon, or a circle. Something that I was very excited to see a moment ago is the saved feature. In this particular case, I basically spared the time on drawing individual boundary for our project location. And basically you can now save that, that polygon that you drew and you can pull it up. This is extremely helpful, for example, if you complete a study, submit it, fast forward, I don't know, a year down the road, they're trying to determine an alternative to what was proposed. There's always, if you're drawing the boundary manually, it's challenging to make sure that you have the exact same boundary that you did a year ago. So having this feature that saves your location allows for that consistency. So if you anticipate that the project may be revisited in a few months and you may need to take a second look at the crash data, you can save the polygon and you can easily pull it up down the road. I don't think that in my experience, when we had the old platform, there was no limit on the number of saved locations that you have. But if we run into that issue, we'll definitely coordinate with the team to communicate it accordingly. So once you have the location, or if you decide to do, I'll just do a quick dummy example. If you decide to do the polygon shape and you're just drawing it, make sure this is a save button. If you're happy with how the boundary was drawn, you can hit confirm. One key thing to mention before you get into this, before you get into this mode for drawing, 
I find it necessary to go into satellite imagery to be able to determine the current lane extent. And I noticed that when I was drawing it, you don't have the flexibility to toggle between the two. Don't go too far into drawing it if you're not able to clearly see the trend lanes and you need that level of detail. Something else that you want to be extremely mindful with Signal 4 download. Signal 4 includes all crashes, including the short reported crashes, which won't appear in the car database. So these are short forms are PDO crashes. Any crash that involves an injury or disabled vehicle should be a long form. And it, I was also going to mention that the crashes on private property are also included within Signal 4. So that's where you want to be extremely mindful as you're drawing your boundary to exclude any parking lots or any areas where you anticipate there's going to be that those crashes wouldn't be pertinent to the safety project evaluation that you're doing. All right, so I'll go ahead and just confirm some features that are helpful to be aware of as you're doing your crash data download. You just saw I expanded three three ribbons or tabs within the menu to the left. Consistent with the other ones, your date is extremely important to make sure it's consistent with the date range that you're downloading. All right. You could also go, if you have a list of crash numbers, you can search for specific reports or specific reporting agencies. In this case, I could go through Miami-Dade County. I'll only pull that particular enforcing agency. There is also filters related to circumstances, participants, and vehicles. So for example, if you're doing a safe routes to school project and you're focused on crashes that involve road users under the age of 19, you can go ahead and filter those out through the options that you're seeing here. I don't want to go into, I don't, we don't need into, to go into too much detail for that, but know that those options and query fill, the query options are available within there. So you hit search. This is a list of crashes that I'm getting. There's some interesting options within the platform. You could take a look at it from a heat map, point mode, auto, and something else that may be useful if you're just having a quick glance at crash patterns. There are some graphics already created and automated within Signal 4. So you have the distribution by crash severity. You have the option to be able to download either in a PNG, PNG, JPEG, or PDF format, any of these graphics. So if you're putting a presentation together that needs to give a snapshot, this may be a, a helpful tool that you can consider. It also provides you additional information about crashes that involve alcohol, date and night distribution. So in this particular case, we have under 20% nighttime crashes for the range. We also have a histogram or graphic comparing crash severity versus crash type. Oftentimes it can be useful to understand where you're having different concentrations of higher severity if it's by crash type. So additional information that can help lead to the problem solving or understanding of safety concerns that may be occurring within your project limits. And the last graphic, I think this is, this can also add a lot of value to the conversation, just seeing the crash distribution or concentration based on day of the week and time of day. And you have a higher density, it's shown with a darker color. So information that may be handy to know, but if you're going into a safety study, evaluating a segment and understanding patterns, you will need additional detail as opposed to just staying at this level of graphics. So for that, what we're going to do is go ahead and download the crash data and I'm going to do the events. There are additional examples of how you can go ahead and download data. And one, one that comes to mind, the map crashes can be extremely helpful if you're already using a GIS layer and need to bring in those crashes already mapped. You can also, if you do have 
access to the traffic crash report. You can access them. You can click this box and download them. Note that there is a limit of 100 reports maximum. So most likely, I do have access to the traffic crash reports, but most likely the data set that we're seeing, it actually exceeds the 100, the, that number of records, and you can see it right here. This summary, it's also helpful that it tells you how many crashes were mapped, how many crashes were returned within the boundary, and how many were not able, how many we were not able to geolocate within the platform. In this case, it's zero, so that's good news. With a map-based search, though, the unmapped is always going to be zero, I think, <laughs> because you're not finding any. It, this statistic also applies in our crash location processing, where we're actually looking at the unmapped crashes to give them locations. So I think that may be a feature left over from the location review. Okay, that's good to know. So I'll go ahead and download just events for now. We can go over, we'll go over in just a minute how to go about downloading traffic crash reports. But just to give you an example, so this basically gives me confirmation that I selected, I'll be receiving an email and it specifies the email that my account is linked to. So I can go ahead and close from there and I will open up my email. I should modify my previous statement. If you, since you did a map based search, there won't be any unmapped crashes, but if you had just done the filters for the crashes within a county or something like that, you could have unmapped crashes come back in that query. So, for example, if I do Miami Dade County crash data download, mm -hmm. there may be unmapped crashes because there yes. was a crash assigned to that municipality. Right, but it doesn't have coordinates on the map, so it won't come up in a map-based search, but it would come up in a wider search. I learn something new every day, working with crash data and with the team. So I just clicked on the click here to download data. It pulled up, let me redo this so you guys can see. So showing folder. So this is my crash data download. And then if I had asked for the GIS map, the MXD file would come up in there as well. In this particular case, I just requested the event spreadsheet or the event level of detail. And this is the information Again, we're not going into detail in this training. We're going to cover that in step two of the of these modules. But similar characteristics, it's a CSV file. You're going to find it may have a different name, but you're going to find similar characteristics to the crash data set or download from CAR and SSLGIS. So your report number, this is something that is going to be extremely useful for the next step, which is downloading traffic crash reports. But your report number, when you pull it from Signal 4 is going to have an eight digit number versus when you download information or crash data from CAR or SSLGIS, it actually has a zero right after those eight digits. So that's important to be aware of. So if you're comparing or trying to remove duplicates, again, something that be mindful. And if I'm going to go ahead and use this as an example for traffic crash report since I had that cap within signal four of 100 crashes and we had almost 300 crashes. So what I do and this is there's different formats to to do this. I just basically add a field and multiply by 10 and I carry that for the rest of my crashes and I'll use this field that has that added zero at the end to pull traffic crash reports. So that leads me to the last portion that we're going to be covering within our training today, which is EDMS in Ben Electronic Document Management System, correct? That's correct. And as you open this and start the search process, I should note you just pulled these crashes out of Signal 4. You probably, you may have included short form crashes. The EDMS, the document library you're going to, is housed at DOT. We have been importing short form crashes 
since 2018. So we will have the short form data forms for those crashes from 2018 forward. But prior to that, we won't. So there may be some missing when you're searching the DOT mess. If they're short forms, the DOT just doesn't have them prior to 2018. So they won't be in our document library. Signal 4 will have them. So you might be able to rerun the query filter for short forms only and then see if it's small enough to download, something like that. Yeah, and if you have a list of those records that was not able to be found within FDOT, mm -hmm. you can actually search within Signal for specific crash numbers. So we, this is a utility, the EDMS, utility export, you probably noticed that it gave me an error first. You need to be VPN connect to FEOT to be able to access the tool. One quick change that it always defaults to central office EDMS and what you need to do to be able to access the safety, the crash reports is to change it to safety or the one that starts with SFDMS. And I already had my login information saved. And I'll go ahead and paste the crashes that I just downloaded from Signal 4. I'll do search. And as Ben was saying, we may most often we are not consistently matching the number of reports. So this is a quick way to verify how many crashes actually returned from that search. So you can so the number can be a little bit deceptive in part because if you have short form crash numbers, we won't have those documents. But also if we have multiple versions of a crash, it, the three or if we have three or four versions of a crash report, you will get four, three or four results for that crash number. So you might have multiples of the same crash number in that document search. I've noticed though, if you, let's say one crash had, and this happens, for example, with fatal crashes where there's mm -hmm. an update, right. that number of, or the iterations of new traffic crash report or crash reports are not accounted within that crash count or document count. So if I had okay. only one crash and it had 10, it would still show only one. Where it will come up is on the documents that are, right. that the search yields. Yes, you're correct. So it said 283 crashes found, but you might end up with 300 some documents in your folder because of multiple versions of the same document. Yeah. So and I think the I versions are labeled. So yes. like version one, two, three, four, you would, the one that's authoritative should be the latest one, the highest version number. And that's a good point. I think they are differentiated by underscore and then the corresponding number in sequence. I have found that not the, not always, but sometimes the last version of the report will not include, it's not a comprehensive report. So you sometimes have to go back to version one of the document, version two, because there has been updates, but for some reason the enforcement officer didn't carry all of the information forward and sometimes you find yourself with a gap or on the history, either on the crash narrative, collision diagram, or a few other things. So it's important to be aware that's what the different files, why it's important to, to have the access to the different files for a detailed evaluation for safety review. Yep. So now that we have downloaded or requested the batch download, depending on the number of records, it does, it can take a little bit longer. It's not as quick as the crash data download that we saw. And I typically will receive an email saying, your traffic crash reports are ready. I'll have to access the drive where it, these get saved and I'll be able to pull those for evaluation. It will take longer than when we finish this training. So for step two, we'll go over what that data download looks like and how you go about accessing. So for additional information, this is if you don't have that quick link or hyperlink saved, you may want to go through the SharePoint side to the EDMS communication or site communication site 
and under the tools, you're going to see the different utility exports and you would select the central office export. And this is what I was showing earlier live within the platform that you want to make sure that you select SF VMS. And for today, that completes the walkthrough of the different crash data download steps. Up next, we are going to be using the same example, project example that we covered through this training to go over merge data. And that will include identifying duplicate crashes based on their unique crash number and removing those duplicates. We'll also go into a little more detail on what the attributes mean and some of the resources available to interpret those data sets. And with that, I wanted to thank you for attending the training. If you do have any, if you run into any questions, I would like to see additional material developed. Going into more detail for any of these resources, feel free to reach out to any of the contacts that you have on the screen. And we look forward to seeing you on the step two training. Thank you everyone for tuning in.